A mole is a very important unit in chemistry. Remember that the mole has three definitions. One has to do with mass. One mole is equal to the molar mass, which is found on the periodic table. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Those particles can be atoms, molecules, or formula units. Formula units are four ionic compounds. And one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas at STP. Remember that this is only if it's a gas and only if it's at STP, standard temperature and pressure, which is 1 atm and 273 kelvin. If it's not a gas, you would have to use density to find that mass, and then you could convert it to moles or whatever you needed to. And if it wasn't at STP and it was a gas, then you would need to use Pivner, which we'll talk about later. Be careful throughout the whole year of diatomics. Diatomics are when an element is present, but it can't be in its atomic form, only its molecular form. In other words, they can't be found in nature by themselves. There's seven diatomic molecules, hydrogen, and then it starts at seven and it makes a seven. So there's nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So it's basically the halogens, oxygen, and nitrogen. So oxygen is never found in nature all by itself. It's always O2. Or fluorine is going to be at least F2. They're not going to be found by themselves. They're highly reactive. In this problem, it says calculate the molar mass of calcium chloride. Step one is you have to write the formula of calcium chloride. Well, calcium's a plus two and chlorine's a negative one, so we get CaCl2. From the periodic table, we can see that calcium has a mass of 40.08 and chlorine is 35.45. But I have two chlorines, so the overall mass of chlorine is 70.5. So adding these up, you get the molar mass of calcium chloride, which is 110.98 grams per mole. So the units for molar mass are grams per mole. For the next problem, they said, how many moles do you have if you have 496 grams? So you start with the number given, which was 496 grams, and we're going to set up our dimensional analysis table. Just like when we were doing conversions, since we have grams on top, we're going to put grams on bottom, and we're looking for moles. You can convert grams to molecules to liters all through moles. But we want moles, so we'll stop at this point. With grams, you're always going to put the molar mass. So looking on the periodic table, carbon is 12.01 and hydrogen is 1.008. So adding that together, we get 16.042. That's how many grams are in one mole. We're going to divide, giving us 30.9 moles of CH4. We had three sig figs to start with, so we have three sig figs in our answer. I'm going to pause the video and get your molar mass of iron 3 chloride. Restart when you have an answer. So iron 3 chloride was FeCl3. So you should have gotten C, 162.5. One iron and three chlorines. I'm going to try number four on your own. Restart when you have number four. So this problem, we're just going from moles to liters, and we're at STP, it's a gas. So I can use dimensional analysis. So I set up my 15 moles. I know moles has to go on bottom, and I'm converting to liters. And I know it's always one mole is equal to so many liters. Multiplying that out, you get 336. But we want two sig figs, so that three rounds up to a four, giving us 340 liters. This next problem, you're starting with grams and you're looking for formula units. Moles is nowhere in the problem. So we start with the number that they gave us and the step that we're gonna have to do first is convert to moles. So you have grams on bottom and moles on top. So you shouldn't be going directly from grams to formula units. For every one mole, you have 58.44 grams. That's the molar mass of sodium chloride. I'm 
Then we're going to keep going with the problem. We have mole on bottom and formula units of NaCl on top. For every one mole, there's Avogadro's number, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaCl. Remember, a formula unit is very similar to a molecule. Just one represents an ionic compound and one's a molecular compound. Multiplying and dividing, we get 5.66 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. If you get stuck or finish, restart when you have an answer. So just like before, we would start with what we're given. We have grams, so we know grams has to go on the bottom without thinking. But we're going to look at the problem. It says how many liters. I can't put liters of calcium chloride on top, and I can't put moles on top because this is not a gas. It clearly states that it's a liquid, and nowhere does it say STP. The other hint is they gave me the density. So more than likely, I'm going to need that density, which I do. So the density is 2.16 grams for every one milliliter. So I can go from grams to milliliters. Then I can take my milliliters and convert those to liters. Looking at my density, there's 2.16 grams for every one milliliter. I can put the one there or I can leave it blank like we did in the density section. Then out of liters and milliliters, I need to put the one with the bigger one, which is liters. And there's a thousand milliliters or 10 to the third milliliters. Multiplying and dividing, make sure that it's 1 times 10 to the 4th divided by 2.16 divided by 1,000. Gives you 4.6 liters. Just like before, I'm looking at the lowest sig figs, which is my mass of 2. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So just like the last problem, they gave you density, so there's no way I can convert moles to milliliters using 22.4. I've got to use that density. So step one is I've got to get moles to one of these two units, which would give me grams, because I can't get moles to liters, because again, it's not a gas. So step one is I'm going to convert moles to grams. So moles has to go on bottom, and I'm converting to grams. Once I get it in grams, I need to get rid of that unit because my final answer doesn't want grams, it wants milliliters. So milliliters is going to go on top. I know for every one mole, there's 36.458 grams from the molar mass, and the density is 1.1 grams for every one milliliter. So multiplying and then dividing by 1.1, you get 41.4 milliliters. Finally, number eight. A lot of people struggle with number eight, so you may want to pay close attention, maybe even star this problem. They're asking how many atoms are in this many grams of calcium hydroxide. The problem comes atoms and calcium hydroxide. This is a formula unit or you can consider it a molecule, but it's definitely not an atom. So I'm going to have to get my 36.93 grams of calcium hydroxide to formula units. Then I can get it to atoms. So step one is I'm going to convert it to moles. The only way I can get it to moles is through my molar mass. So I have my grams on bottom and I'm going to convert it to moles. I know there's 74 grams in every one mole. Once I'm at moles, I need to get it to particles. So the particle world is going to be formula units because this is ionic. And I know that one always goes with moles and formula units is a type of particle. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. 
this is where most people stop and why they miss the problem because they say atoms up here, but we haven't got into that step. So we need one more section for every one formula unit. If it was a molecule, then we would say for every one molecule, we have so many atoms. Sometimes the problem will say how many atoms of carbon, how many grams of oxygen, how many grams of phosphorus or atoms of phosphorus. In this problem, it just wants to know how many atoms in total. Well, there's one calcium, two oxygen, and two hydrogen. That means there's five atoms for every one formula unit. So multiplying and dividing, we get 1.501 times 10 to the 24th atoms. You also could have just found how many molecules or formula units there were and then times five 